Are you there, David? David, are you there? Uh-huh. Yeah, you're there? I'm not seeing you on Zoom. Uh, yeah, well, um, I understand. You came up one time and then you dropped out. So you don't want to ask, um, try to see if you could, um, see yeah. So you came up with one and you dropped out. Okay, so we're waiting on um, Damon to join. Damon is for a few guys who dropped off. So as soon as Damon, as soon as Damon joins again, we'll show you. All right, he's back. Okay, Damon, I see you again now. Are you there? I think you might have went to went on the phone, they got knocked off. Yeah, my air headed off. Can you hear me now? Yes, I see what I'm hearing you. Ah. You might have been into the story song a little bit. Another half, I see it.
are live anyway on Facebook, so be careful like you're not um, putting on your makeup on Facebook. Uh-huh. Yeah, honey, not good. All right, so let me stop with this. Then we go back, and I take it we're still going live. If it's not happening, somebody please call me and let me know. Um, it appears so, though. All right, hi, Damien. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hi, my brother. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And you? I'm good. Good, thank you. All right. So um, this is my program I call Under the Spotlight. It might sound a little scary, but I try to not to get feathers ruffled too much. I'm more into information, getting information and sharing information with our um, common people of common interest. We tend to deal with politics here um, to try to get to quiet the room a little to here because there's a lot of noise out there right now. A lot of this pleasure in certain actions that took place and because that it, it has created a lot of dissonance and we're trying to quiet the room a minute and then to get to some of the experts like yourself to understand what is happening. But, I like to start off by asking people to tell us a little bit about themselves. And I'm gonna ask you to tell us as much as you can from your youth date, whatever, where in Jamaica you're from, and your school, all that kind of good stuff. People want to, they want to know about you. Because you came on the scene, you're one of the most dynamic politicians, bar none, in Jamaica right now. I don't think anybody wants to have a political meeting and not invite Damien Crawford. So that's why we're going to you. Come because what makes you take what makes you this person you have become. All right, Damien Crawford, Senator Damien Crawford. Uh, all right, thanks, thanks for having me and good afternoon to you and um, to your listeners. I'll be quick because I've repeated this many, many, many times. Um, historically, my mother is from Westmoreland and I have good roots there in Haddo, Westmoreland. Um, she moved to Kingston, lived in Tivoli Gardens and then moved to Walton Park Road. Um, so I spent many, many summers in Tivoli Gardens and um, have good connections down in Tivoli Gardens. My auntie Vida, um, Uncle Clark and others um, lived until their death in Tivoli Gardens. Um, grew up in Little Lane, right behind Peter Phillips' current office, um, 113 Park Road, um, Squatter Community in Little Lane. Went to Half a Tree Primary, which is now one of the top primary schools um, in Jamaica. At that time, it was it was an evolution that carried us there. Um, got exposed to Stone Love and those people because that's on the same road um, as Half a Tree Primary. Passed um, common entrance and went to Kingston College and um, studied at Kingston College um, until I went on scholarship to the University of the West Indies. I studied in the Bahamas, tourism management, and um, worked at the Franklin D Resort for a year and then went to do my master's at UA. Um, while I was in the Bahamas, I was guild president, and um, then I came to Jamaica and was once again guild president after being hall chairman for Taylor Hall, and then guild president for Mona. So I was guild president twice, and then um, led the march um, and the demonstration for no deregistration in 2005. It was as guild president. Um, also the first set of students to have received $40 million from the government who have started the revolving loan scheme. And Maxine Henry Wilson invited me to be a member of the PMP, even though I demonstrated against her twice and went on hunger strike. And um, out of that, um, I was asked to consider being the president of the YO after we lost in 07 became the president of the YO and um, again led the demonstration 
against Bruce Bolin with all those taxes. Um, I, I was known for saying reverse before the first, first of January. And um, out of that was asked by the PMP when Andrew Wallace came with Young People Time, when Bruce Bolin stepped aside to run in his rural St. Andrew. Um, at that time, we were seven points behind. And I was just like the face of the youth, even though I wasn't expected to win. Um, won that election. And um, as I've always told people, I'll never forget, I was the last winner to be declared for the People's National Party because of the size of East Rural Centre. Um, however, I heard that I won before it was announced on television. And when I headed to um, PMT headquarters, um, the, the headquarters was relatively silent, even though we already had 41 seats. And they were watching the TV, um, silent and hopeful that I would come through. When Harborview came down and I eventually won, it was great pandemonium. When they found out that I won, it was pandemonium. And so I'll never forget that. And I'll always be grateful for having experience that even after victory, 41 and sure victory, they waited on day 42. Um, and that was, was me. Um, didn't run in the last 2016. Um, was appointed senator later on and then eventually ran in East Portland when um, the member of parliament, Bloomfi, was murdered. Lost that election to Anne Marie Vaz. Prior to that, I won president, vice president of the People's National Party with the most votes even though I did not have a constituent. And many persons felt that I would not be successful not having a constituency. One that I um, tried to represent in that capacity. Last in East Portland. And yeah, that's basically it since. Grew up with mother and father. My father died when I was 15. And um, he was a, 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 a great PMP activist. Okay, so I want to just kind of go back a little bit in some of what you said, because I know you have said it so many times already. And I'm not hearing you. Tried to, yeah? Are you hearing me okay? I'm not sure. I'm not hearing you. Okay, I'm going Hello? to go a little closer to the, oh, you know what, um, let me see if I can get some more. I'm not volume. hearing you, so I am seeing. No, I'm seeing you, and I'm hearing you quite good. So don't try to change uh -huh. anything. Don't change anything. I'm, I'm, I'm going to increase my volume somewhere here, and hopefully we can get back on track. But don't change mm -hmm. anything because I'm... I'm it says you're sharing, so I'm not sure. Yeah, it's sharing, and it's, um, it's, it's live on, on, um, on um, Facebook. All right, I'm hearing you now. All right, I did an adjustment on my volume. Yes, I'm hearing you now. Okay, my volume was down, because for the music, I had to turn it down a little. Anyway. So what I want to do is so I know it has become sort of mundane now for you to be going over it over and over because of your you're off your you're off the video. So please try and get back onto the video. You you freeze, I think you're frozen your video screen. You, you I think you're frozen. No, I, I, I'm hearing you. But I'm not seeing you now. So and if I'm not seeing, I don't think anybody else is. But in the meantime, while you're trying to see what, why the video has gone down. Um, so you, you mentioned that you lived in these areas in off the Waltham Park. And we know that in those areas, they're not necessarily um, uptown dwellings, not the most, you know, all right, you're back, your video is back. Are you hearing me? Your video is back but it's kind of frozen. Maybe it's your, maybe yeah, it's your yeah. phone. You're using your phone, I suspect. I think yeah, I, I, I am. Yeah, you, oh, it's okay. You're frozen. But I'm hearing you very well. I'm hearing you very well. Yeah, and your, your, your picture is on the screen. So let's work with that. Face, let's mm -hmm. work with that for now. Yes. So, so um, what, you know, we see these young people nowadays and they're not doing so well, a lot of them. And people are saying, giving excuses because they didn't have anything. 
or they didn't, you know, the parents not wealthy or the parents can't afford it. But you did very well based on where you are from. What is it that made that motivated you to become who you are versus the kids, the young people we see now who all they want to do is stand on a corner and as some people say, rub out their, their handmaider. What do you think is uh -huh. the, the, the cause for that? Well, well for, firstly, we, we project onto our young people uh, uh, um, a, that is the minority and use that as the, as, um, I've always mathematically, if you ever murder to a different um, per year, you'll only have a thousand children. So since only one man can kill a man, a conspirator as a person. You know, um, Damien, you Damien, 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 last year, different Damien. murder, they killed one person. They only had children murdered. Uh, Vast majority of all. Damien, are not, uh, Damien your, the yes, phone hello. is breaking mm -hmm. down. The thing is breaking down. I don't know if you want to yeah, kill the call and come back in because it, it, it's reception is poor. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's interfering with the picture, okay. with the video and the audio. So um, I know you're, you're using your phone and the, line, I know that the, the phone companies are not the greatest in Jamaica. So, and we really want to hear what you're saying. So if you could either reboot on that, try again, because we weren't hearing anything. And the, the picture was this drawing. This, not so much a picture because we know what you look like, but we want to hear what you're saying. Can you try to reboot that? You may want uh, to kill, kill the call and come back. Hello? Me. Yeah, let me, I think it sounds a little better. I'm hearing you well. Yes, go now. Mm -hmm. Try again, yes. Yeah, so I'm saying we project onto the majority what is the reality of the minority. A lot of our kids are not passing or, or are failing at school because systematically the schools that they attend were not designed for them to be successful. The schools that they attend were actually designed for persons to be laborers and that level of labor needed subjects and didn't need um, university qualifications. They were really to be um, muscle workers. And so the whole design of those non-traditional schools were not for their success and the necessary reviews have not been made to facilitate their success. And so it wasn't, it was the luck of the draw, I would say, that I had one genetic blessings, but also a set of parents that were demand for success. And I was one of the very, very few that ended up at a traditional school. And um, that had its own benefit. Um, there is a um, reality in Jamaica that St. George's College have an 87% chance of getting five subjects, Kingston College 89%, Alpha High School 94%, and just across the road, Holy Trinity 2%. So whenever there is that reality that the vast majority are unlikely to be successful, then it seems to be more of a systematic problem than an individual problem. I carry as well to the concept of being on the corner. When you look at the size of a house in Tivoli Gardens, or the size of a house in Arnett Gardens, or in, in back to um, Painland, with seven or eight people in that house, maybe two bedroom. And I can tell you when I, where I grew up originally, was eight of us in two bedroom. So therefore, my mother and father had a room, and then two dive on bed in um, another room with three to a bed. The adults would be outside more than inside because of the discomfort created by the crowding in the space. And so therefore you have a set of young adults within these communities, inner city communities, that are often on the street because the discomfort of home um, is, is high. And um, they're not employed, um, unlikely to be employed unless there is a, a short term muscle work available. And uh, machines that replace muscle. So a lot of our people who were trained to do muscle work are no longer needed because premix have replaced those who used to mix them in. And weed walk replaced those who used to chop bush and chop to replace those who used to move stones. So 
Um, a lot of what we observe are just unfortunate realities of the systematic circumstances that they face. So I was lucky to have had um, the opportunity to escape that, but I knew people that I thought were more talented than I, that were not able to avoid it because they didn't get the same blessings. Mm. All right. So, and the on on um, when you went into, we're going to jump ahead uh, mm -hmm. because you know we have the time is limited. But when you were in East Rural, what happened there? Why things didn't work out with you and the constituents? Um, I don't know. I mean, people say that, but there was three days demonstration when I wasn't returned. Um, to be the, the member of parliament. So um, not the general constituents, they were a group of persons. I think that I approached politics in an incorrect way um, initially because I went in to fight. Um, if you're not attacked, but you have a mindset to fight, you perceive everything as an attack. Mm -hmm. And I went into politics feeling that politicians were generally wicked and that they could do better and didn't. Um, I've learned that boy, the majority of people actually want what they get. And um, even though what they get is nothing, that's basically what they want. So I was very hostile and resistant to anybody that didn't agree with the direction that I was going. And persons who have greater experience feel a little bit aggrieved when you're hostile to their opinion. Um, but I felt, um, and the resources are very limited. You have basically $13 million to spend for the entire year for all the constituency. And um, I felt that um, education was the, the only way because half and half was not sufficient. Um, some people always say, why you never find a middle ground? There's no middle ground between slavery and freedom. You're either free or you're a slave. There's no, there's no middle ground. And so I felt that I would prefer that the grandchild didn't need to ask me for medicine than to give the grandmother medicine and have the grandchild growing up in the same circumstance to eventually be asking me for medicine. Mm -hmm. And when I took those decisions to do the, the camp, we had, a, we had a, a camp on campus for 21 days, 400 students living at the University of the West Indies, um, 24 of whom have gone to the university since um, based on my information, I'm sure others have. Um, we had night schools um, within each of the communities and the size of the task force have had to have about nine or 10 night schools. We, we built computer centers long before COVID suggested there was a need for computer centers. And that was a drain on the resource. And that drain on the resource caused for me not to do bun and cheese, caused for me not to do um, funeral contributions, caused for me um, not to do um, back to school vouchers and persons who were used to that, especially the workers of the party, um, because of that norm was resistant to the change and the method and the strategy that I used to the change. But um, I remind the public that there were three to four days of demonstration um, when the delegates decided. Mm. Um, uh, I know you used the term that you you um, went about it in a wrong way. I, I don't want to override you with, um, with what you're saying, but I'm just saying maybe the people weren't ready for that. And we've, we have seen it on a, on a more global scale in Jamaica where we have seen elections in recent times where people are settling, happy to get 64 US dollars to sell their votes for 64 US dollars. Mm -hmm. They hear 10,000 Jamaican dollars and think they get a lot of money and you divide that by the 155 or whatever it is, even though it's like 152, it's still gonna be like 60 something US dollars. And you can't imagine why would somebody sell their birthright like that? Their right, yeah. their, their, their power, they sold their power. And you know, it takes me back to a lot of people like Bible stories, but it takes me back to the, the story of Esau and Jacob, that Esau, um, Jacob sold his birthright for a, 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 a plate of porridge <laughs> because he went out to work and on his way back home, Esau was a slick one, 
and we know who is he signed even today's world. Um, he was slick. And so he knew that Jacob would have been hungry and he knew that Jacob got the blessings. And he said, okay, so, you know, you, you're hungry. I've, I have some food, a pot of porridge. You mm. know, just to think of it, the, the most common, cheapest dish. And he, he made a deal with him and he gave up his birthright for that pot of porridge, for that plate. It's not even a pot, it's a plate of porridge. Mm. And so we see the same thing happening where people literally are now selling their votes. I mean, this, this is something that people fought and died for. You know, yeah. when he, I heard somebody mention a name the other day, Aggie Bernard. Um, these are people who gone, came and gone long before, but those are the people who actually fought and bled. You know, yes. he said William Grant, which park was named off. These guys were beaten close to the, within an inch. I wasn't around at the time, but you know, I read about them. He was beaten within an inch of his life. And they said that when, when he took that beating, Buster man to bear this chest and say, shoot me, but leave my people. That was a bit of a con man game because Bustamante yeah. was a mulatto and the rule in, in the system at the time was that you could not shoot. No black police officer, because a lot of the police were black by then. No black police officer mm -hmm. could shoot a mulatto child because mulatto child belongs to the white man. Right. And, and, and so, but these guys paid dearly a lot of people died in 1938, and you watch to see people now not even willing to fight, you know, well, anything. I look at politics very different from most people. Um, while I want to win, I perceive the campaign to be important, the campaign for the type of country you want to see. And so people cannot not be ready for what they need, in my opinion. But it is your duty to campaign, to convince them that is what they need. And um, unfortunately, the country has been going in a direction opposite to my opinion of what the world should be and what the country should be. And those who are wealthy has figured out how to turn the intent of democracy, which is the majority, greater good for the greater majority. And um, um, coincidentally, the greater majority are not wealthy, they are, um, low income. And so what the wealthy have recognized is to turn the democratic process upside down so that it can be the greater good for the greater minority is to introduce the willingness and the need for resources and to use that resources to capture the X of the majority. Um, and so because of that need and because of that disinformation, um, many of our younger people in particular who don't know the struggles of being called a bastard, or who don't know the struggles of not being able to work in a bank, or who don't know the struggles of not being able to read or having access to a school, um, and who don't have confidence in the political system, start taking money um, for their vote. But I read a book once called A Man for a Season, said everyone have a price, um, if it's even his life. So maybe I would sell my vote for 500 million. They just have never offered it because it wouldn't be feasible to buy one vote for 500 million. Um, but they have their price of 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. And um, by extension, they are willing to sacrifice it. So as I say, I think about politics differently. I disagree with even this, um, this, this foundation that the PMP has started. Um, I don't support it and I would never have done it um, because I don't think that's what a political party should do. A political party should change policy to benefit all. Um, a, a foundation like that is for the Kiwanis Club to say in spite of policy, we have to help our people. But um, the political party role is to change policy so everybody can get a house, not to make everybody bad mind the one person that got a house. So I was always against even that $10 million thing that was um, promoted by initially Peter Bunting and then eventually Mark Goldin. That's just my opinion of what politics is. All right. So now, that this, this, this has brought us to a, a place where we are one of the biggest bone of contention using the Jamaican uh, um, proverb 
is that we have a part, we have a situation right now where, and I know it's a very sticky subject for you, so I don't wanna push you too much over into where people will come at you because this is why, you know, when I, that song that was being played at the start of this program, that song reminded, reminded me so much of you in that if you open your mouth and you say something which is the right thing, you pay, you know, you pay dearly for it. You pay dearly for <laughs> it with your constituency. And I know you have some people sitting by and standing by waiting to hear you say something to pounce on you. As if we don't want to deal with truth anymore. Tell a lie, tell me a lie, and that will make me happy. Um, but where the PNP is right now, which is kind of, I, that's what my mission is, is to try to find what is going on. And from a young, last, last week we spoke with Paul Burke and I, you know, it, it went very well and it was very useful and he, he gave up a lot of good information. How do you feel about what is going on now? How can, because you, I see where you, you walked away from the, you literally walked away from the thing. I'm pretty sure some people had to talk very hard to bring you, pull you back off mm -hmm. that ledge. Um, but you, you mean in East Rural? Not necessarily East Rural, no. In the party, because that's where oh, I, oh, okay. I want to get into yeah. the party. Because we would, you know, people need to understand what is going on. Because people, people are angry with the PNP. Not just, mm -hmm. you know, the general Jamaica is angry with the PNP because people need a government now. I'm not even going to touch them. But the place, we, we have a very bad government. And in better times for the PNP, this guy wouldn't, or these people wouldn't last a year, but they're going on yes. and they're doing all kinds of you know crazy, stupid things and making, right now you're wondering if they're not doing this COVID thing to spread it. Because when mm -hmm. you lock down the place and then open for three days and everybody bundles up, you know, it bundles up in one place, you wonder what is this? You know, is he trying to reach herd immunity by having everybody get this COVID? And I don't think it's a good idea. You know, if he should, if that's his idea. But with the party where it is now, what do you think is happening? What do you um, think this can well, be? The party is unrecognizable to me um, at a point. All right. The first time I was exposed to the, to the ideology of the party, as I said, my father was an activist. But as an activist, the only thing my father ever told me about the PMP was when he said, I said, how oh, you love it, son? And he said, if a mistake was to be made, the PNP will make it on behalf of people and the JLP will make it on behalf of business. And since he doesn't have a business, he's a PNP, um, he said that. But the first real exposure to the ideology of the PNP came when I was 16 years old and a guidance counselor at the, P at the Kingston College gave me a book called The Politics of Change. Mm -hmm. And she gave me that book after I was dating a quote unquote uptown girl, had my birthday party in the lane, sink fence, dirt road, a standpipe. Her father dropped off her little sister, see where I live, and decided that she and all her friends had to leave. And um, it was the biggest joke for the next week, and it was very hurtful to me. And she gave me this book, um, The Guidance Counselor. And um, since then, I've been committing my talents that I've gained and my, uh, um, the skills that I've gained and the talents that I've, I, I was blessed with to, to achieve in that um, change and that equity. The party has dissolved into just wanting to win. Um, when they challenged Peter Phillips with the slogan, we can win, um, it was the sign of the death of the party. Um, the, the party is there to change things. And you seek to win so that you can more efficiently and effectively change those things. I'll give you the example of the Green Party, not the Jamaica Labour Party now, but normally the environmental parties. Mm -hmm. They're not winning generally. If they win one seat, they win enough. But they continue to campaign mm -hmm. on their opinions of the, what the world should be, how the resources should be used, how, how, how systems should be organized. And so a political party should aim to win, but it cannot be concerned only with the victory. Because if you change your intent, then you are not winning 
for something. You have to want to win for a reason, to change some things, to improve some things, to give access to some people. No, we just want to win and by any means necessary. And so you find that there's a high level of inconsistency um, in our utterances, which makes um, us unbelieved by the people because of that level of inconsistency. And there's a great uncertainty as to which group should support us because no group feels that they are our priority. Um, PMP was the Poor People's Party when I was growing up, evolving out of being the Workers' Party. Now, when you're the Workers' Party, not all workers are poor, but all workers need that protection because they earn wages to earn a living, as versus those who earn profit to earn a living. And there's a whole different um, approach and a whole different reality. I have earned wages and I have earned profits. Your approach is different, your interest is different, your intent is different, your mindset is different, and the PNP has not been consistent. So because I was a member of the leadership, I'm embarrassed by what it is. And because I am a face of the party, which means that a 10-year-old with a city PNP Monday or an eight-year-old with a city PNP Monday, or just on any given road, a PNP person will know they can approach me. I am extremely embarrassed by, by where we are and what we have become. Um, at this time. Is it that um, we, we have, the word socialism has become taboo in Jamaica since the, 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 the time of Siaga, Eddie Siaga. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw what, well, I don't know, maybe you didn't see much of it because based on your age, you might not know too much are seen physically what Michael Manley did under his democratic socialism program. Uh, we can't see, there's no place that capitalism is gonna do for people what socialism will do. <clears throat> and there is a fear of saying socialism is going to take away from the rich to give to the poor. And from when I was a child, it's a long time. They, that, that's the kind of thought that used to be there. If that fear exists, in, it should be in the rich. The poor shouldn't be afraid that they, um, it will be taken from the rich to give the poor, or the poor should be glad that it will be taken from the rich to give the poor. So if there is such a concern, it should be among the minority. You see, what has happened is that we make a person like a Cliff Hughes, for example, act as if he's the opinion of the majority, and he's not the opinion of the majority. I'll give you an example. I said on the internet, um, Twitter the other day, um, I saw you comment as well, that um, there should be no mandatory vaccines, um, that I'm against mandatory vaccines, and that it, the situation has not attained the, 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 the threshold for the removal of freedom. And um, Nationwide bring this article backlash and very, very, very. They did a, a poll the other day, and nearly 70% of Jamaicans said they don't think that the vaccine should be mandatory. Mm -hmm. So the fact that a few people on Twitter disagree, and it is their right, it is not the opinions of the majority. We're allowing the minority to act as if they are the majority because they have access to a amplification of their voice. They have access to a, to a mic. And because they have access to a mic um, or a television screen, AMA or, 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 or the media, we act as if their opinion is the majority opinion. Um, and we have then um, recruited ourselves and hide uh, um, in the bushes because we feel now that our opinion is not, is not the popular opinion. I am not afraid of my opinion not being the popular opinion. I am afraid of my opinion being the wrong opinion. But once I'm convinced that I'm right, it don't have to be the popular opinion. And many times, remember when the goat wasn't the popular opinion? But it wasn't the wrong opinion because everybody knows the same goat. Government, agriculture, ministry, people. Um, remember when the light bill said, let's give $3,000 for light bill, wasn't the popular opinion? No, we see them start a petition to get $3,000 for light bill um, to, 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 to move forward. So therefore, um, the party's interest to be the popular opinion or the popular party is in the party short 
from being the believed part because you have to be consistent to be believed the truth is constant and consistent and so yeah that, that's a problem well all right so now but the, the party of itself is in what you call it um they're in this bind they're, as you, they would say the, they're between a rock and a hard place right now what do you think can dislodge the party from where it is and allow it to start floating free and doing what it's it, it needs a message it needs a message and a messenger that's what politics have always needed so in, when you're saying that we do you're saying at the start and without putting you too much out there you're we thinking that is the present messenger is not Cutting no, it. well, you don't even, if you don't have a message, then how can you have a message? If you don't have a message, it mm. starts with a message. But how it's saying you have a ride without a donkey or a horse or a bike or a bicycle. You must but, have something to ride. And how, then you say you're a rider. All right. But how do we change it though? Because where it well, is. The norm I've observed is that the political party's message is highly dependent on the real and truthful beliefs of its leader. That's what I've observed. Yes, we have certain um, historical things and we have some parameters that guide us, but it shifts further right, further left, further center. It shifts in importance based on the person that, that, that um, is in charge. So for example, Peter Phillips was adamant about um, land reform. In his mind, that was very necessary. He was adamant about education access. Those were his two opinions. Now, he was a great messenger. Because... Uh, I think we're breaking up. We're breaking down again. So if you want to wait a minute, I want to hear what you're saying. Right? You're at a very critical, Listen. You're at a critical point, but the, the line is going bad again. So yeah, you hear me now? Yes, it sounds like it's mm -hmm. settled down again. Start, start back. We want to hear that part. So, so, so I'm saying Peter Phillips, he had a message. He wanted land reform and he wanted um, educational access. He was very clear that some of those ills were inherited from slavery and that it was the duty of the children of states to go and correct those ills when they had access to power. He was clear. I knew that because I was around him. And because I believed in him, but the public never heard it because he wasn't a good messenger. He wasn't packaged properly. He was resisted constantly. He was um, busy fighting for his own life. And um, he just never matched the opinions of the public of who should be the messenger at this particular point in time. But he had a message. I'm not sure what um, Comrade Golden's message is. So I can't even comment on how good a messenger he is because you can't look and say with any certainty, this is his fight. This is his, this is his intent. This is the era that he would change. All right, so now people, he's not popular. He's not getting any traction as the people like to say. He has been found, he has been indicted by the electorate, especially the party members, for some activities which, for lack of a better expression right now, a bit unsavory, where they, we have seen these WhatsApp leaks, which shows you his activity where he was, part, he was fully, very much a part of the conspiracy that took place to pull down Dr. Phillips and pull him down at a time when it was kind of, it was a bit stupid the way they did it because we were one year away from a, an election and nobody was gonna succeed within a year after pulling down your, the president. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna lose those supporters. We are here now. What do you think? Because I, you know, the, the bottom line is we have to dislodge and replace. Well, I like Mark personally. Um, I, I grew up in a time that if somebody does something good for you, you should never forget it. 
And um, when I was running for vice president, he came to New Kingston and endorsed me um, publicly and openly. And I, I will never forget that. And I am always grateful um, for that. And he even delayed his conference so that I could go. So I don't find him to be a person with any personal vendetta against me personally. Um, however, the people that he surrounds himself with, um, I really believe some of them are on their own, um, what, do you, what do you call revenge campaign. And um, as you say, you like to speak to the Bible. When I met with the other vice president, um, at the time when they were decided if we were going back, I told them I wasn't going back because at some point, somebody must decide if we should cut the baby in two. Um, you will know of the, 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 the story in the Bible, Bible of Solomon, Solomon mm. when um, two ladies claimed the baby. Mm. And um, he said, all right, I'll share the baby in two. And one had to be willing to let go of the baby. I feel that I'm that one who's willing to let go of the baby because I would prefer for the baby to survive. It will not survive if both of us decide to cut it in two. And so they have surrounded him and he has surrounded himself, in my opinion, with persons who don't want to win, they just want to fight. It's a very difficult person to come to any agreement with because they don't want to win. Even when you win, you're still fighting. Yes. And so, <laughs> Um, so I told him I was not going to run back um, because I felt that the party needed um, a group to be totally in charge and to seek to carry it in the direction that, that they feel it should go. Um, because if we keep fighting over the direction, then it will go nowhere. And um, so I told him I was stepping aside. So you think, do you think Mark Golden has got it? Does he understand what is happening? And is he the kind of person who will say, you know what, I'm the problem here. It's for the good of the party. Let me step back. I don't know. Me. I don't know him like that. Plus, our power is not easy to let go. Mm. Um, nobody wants to give up power. And many times, it's not just for personal reasons. I don't think Mark needs politics. He's very wealthy. Um, however, he might believe that he's the best person and that he can do things that others would not do. As I believe I'm the best person, and as Lisa believes she's the best person, all of us in our minds feel that if we have the power, we'll be able to do better than the other for whatever biases that we have grown up with in our own minds. It takes a sick um, confidence. And I say sick because it must be an extreme confidence in yourself that out of everybody in Jamaica, you should lead it. Of everybody that exists, you should be the one in charge. And so people don't give up power. Um, but he has surrounded himself with people who wants to abuse that power, who wants to, as I say, on a revenge tour. And those who did is, is, is in, their, in their line of sight, um, they want to, to punish them. And I'm too old to be punished, right? But let me let me ask, what happened? What happened between you and some of these people? Why they come out to you like that? Why is it that? Is it jealousy? What is it? I don't know if it's jealousy because they've never expressed it. But Floyd Green has learned that recently. The worst thing in politics is to have next or future in front or behind you. Mm. It's the worst thing in politics. A target that comes on you immediately. Mm. So if a man say you're the next leader, next minister of finance, next anything. Somebody who want that is no longer your friend and their friends are no longer your friend. Um, and so, as I say, I don't believe in what, and I can say, for example, Peter Bunting and I, I'm no, I don't have a personal vendetta against him, but 90% of the things he believes, I disagree with. And by extension, I assume 90% of the things I believe he disagrees with. I consistently campaign against Peter Bunting getting the ultimate power because he would become the, the, the decision maker in a quarrel. He's the last, he has the veto power. And I would not want to give somebody the veto power that I don't agree with in essence of what the country should be. So, you so think, it is not a personal thing against him. So you think if Mark Golding should shed himself of some of these people he, we could get the party moving, is that it? 
if he would, you know, get rid of some of these? No, the, the, if he would get rid of some, <clears throat> and when I say get rid, because no party benefits from losing people. Mm. I said that even when Kari left for the JLP, no party benefits from losing people. It's a numbers game. You want all your people. Mm. When I say if you should shed some of these people, it means they're in. Ah, you're breaking down again, and we really want to hear that part. Well, it's this is over his decision. No, yes. go, over that, go over that part, Damon. It yes, I said, if he should reduce their influence over his decisions, mm -hmm. then he would attract more support. Mm -hmm. And in attracting more support, then the probability of success increases because the more hands on deck is the more likely success will be achieved. But if he continue to allow them to be chief influencers and their intent is to divide, um, I don't know how he's going to achieve that unity. I can tell you, I tried everything in my power, everything to unite the party. And when I saw that it was going in the opposite direction, I decided, well, I need to come off this bus right now. This bus is not going where I'm going. But I tried everything in my power. I, I tried to arrange unity football match. I reached out to all the persons on the other side, asking them not to have an election for GenSec. I, I reached out to Dayton Campbell himself. I reached out to Mark. I reached out to Angela Brownberg. I offered her my vice presidential position not to have an election. All of those were resisted. I tried to facilitate whatever I could in the region. I decided not to offer myself a vice president so that they could get two people. I made myself available to the president for whatever discussion he wanted to have. I continuously tried to say, yo, I mean, I, I remember reaching out and said, listen, I will give up my VP position not to have a GenSec election and a chairman election. If, 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 if you will give Angela the VP, and just have a, di a discussion with the two um, persons, give one GenSec and give one chairman because the election would, would wreck the party. It was refused. And these are things that I have on, 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 on record, written record. None of them can deny that, that this is so. You understand? What do you, what do you think they want, these people? They just want to fight. They don't want to win. They don't want to change. They just want to fight. They just decide, yo, listen, that's an enemy of mine. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight them. You, you, you understand? Um, even with this most recent thing where the VPs resigned, um, I made it clear to the leader, yo, listen, I'm not off about myself. I'm tired of it, right? Things were being leaked out of, of, of officers' meetings, um, things that I said. Um, and and, and I, I, I felt that that was wrong. And I generally just say, yo, listen, all right, I'm not running back. Everybody that called me, I say I'm not running back. And somehow one of those individuals said they wanted a letter that I am not running back. I said, I don't understand. I mean, I told you I'm not running back. I'm not in any conversation. I've made no attempt to show that I'm running back. But you want some form of evidence to use as embarrassment. Because remember, these are people who are willing to, to, to record me without my knowledge save it for three months, publish it at a time that they felt they could use it to win an internal election, promote it on the radio, and then say it's a masterstroke. Now, how would I write you a letter? You can't get nothing from me. Mm -hmm. Because you are very willing to share this thing publicly to seek to arrange my demise. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it moved at that time, in my opinion, to just hatred more so than a difference in opinion. Um, so yeah, um, at the end of the day, as I say, I, I know and I have it recorded. They know I have it recorded because most of it was in writing. I, try, I offered them up my position. I begged them. I tried to arrange a football match that the, um, the excuse was, we will be injured. This is a football match amongst ourselves. None of us could run for more than five minutes, right? <laughs> um, and then it is penalty shootout. It wasn't against Brazil. And I mean, 
it, it, I, I begged Layton. I said, Layton, if you are the GenSec right now, the resistance would be great. There's a whole set of people that were trained to hate you based on how you acted in the last election. Um, I asked him, I said, take Deputy General Secretary, take the position that is paid. Be in charge of the group since clearly that is the intent to protect Mark. But do not force the situation. The next day, the leader was on the radio saying that he wants date. And I've never seen that. Never seen that in my history in the People's National Party. I've been active since 2007. I've never seen a leader campaign openly um, for, for internal positions. Right? And even after that, when asked not to campaign against the leader's intent, I, I, I stopped. So, I mean, these are people that, as I said, they just don't want to win, they want to fight, and I don't want to fight. So with that, it, it sounds like we, we can put the buck, stop the buck right at the, the leader's foot, feet. Um, hmm? The buck always stops with the leader. And, and, the, and, and that so is the now, curse of being the leader. And so now I, it takes me to this question to say, there was a move by this very same, well, the same set of people you're talking about. There was a move to remove Dr. Peter Phillips by the hook or the crook, whether through an election of um, signing uh, some kind of document to say, take to the governor general, to say a, a no confidence vote. We, I'm not seeing how it, it, this is gonna get any better. Do you think if the same, if these, the ones who are now MP, who are not wholehearted supporters of the present leader, if these say 11 of them or eight of them would get up and say, okay, with this thing is not looking at good. It's not going anywhere. Do you think it would be any worse or, I mean, just removing this person and put maybe say, ask <clears throat> somebody like a Peter Phillips or anybody for that matter to hold a position to settle down the party and then have a, have an, a, a, a contest. And I'm pretty, would you be willing to get involved in that? Um, I know people are one of the favorite would be yourself uh, the two favorites would be yourself and Lisa. Would you be willing to get into that? And a contest. Well, you see, what I had a problem with when they tried to move Peter Phillips was why they were trying to move Peter Phillips. If you don't agree with the country I want to see, then I should not want you to have power. So I should try to move him. But they wanted to move him under the argument that he couldn't win. That is not sufficient um, to move a person. It is, is this person's aligned, in my opinion, to change the country in the way that I want to change the country? And so therefore, it, it was that circumstance that I was in, in, in total disagreement with. So basically, um, yeah, I don't know what the parliamentarians are thinking. I can say generally, in my opinion, if, if, if anything I keep, I, I'm, I'm intended to be a part of. Um, the last time I sat that one out, I felt that I didn't have the resources necessary to, to participate. Um, um, but if, if there is a, a, a opening, I would be able to express my, my, my intent and my interest. Um, however, there is no opening now. And um, I am just hoping that we can have a party that moves in a direction that the people can be confident represents the people. And that is what I'm hoping. So um, you don't have to answer this one, but what do you think of the, the, those who can make a move and not doing it? Do you think they're being heroic in, in not making a move or do you think they're, I mean, you're not gonna say cowards, but you know, we out here, we say cowards, but- A party in constant disturbance. No, no, people, you see, what I've learned, a lot of people like to fight a war with other people's blood, you know? It's the best war to fight because you will not die. You just fight with another man's blood and say, all right, him dead, I just say go. A party in constant disturbance will not be a successful party. Mm. Secondly, do not presume that if there's a forceful change, 
that that side who supported um the one hunting and gold yeah. would not equally resist. Yeah. So therefore, um the the the, the, the change to 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 force might not be successful for the, the person who achieves the position to force. But right and now so therefore it is reasonable for that individual to analyze to say why would I want to be the leader if success is unlikely? Um, that wouldn't make sense. Which is what they which is which is what they indicted Peter Phillips on. That's that's the very same point to say he could not win. So now they're in that same position. Well, it's early days. It's early days. Oh um, man, I can't, the way it's listen, going, the way it's going, I'm it, telling you. It's why it was popular. Michael Manley popular? It was his message. Why was Portia popular? It was her message. There were other people with Portia hairstyle that wasn't as popular. There were other people, Michael Manley complexion that wasn't as popular. The, the, the support of the public comes through a message that they believe from a messenger that they believe in. And the People's National Party needs those two things. It needs a message and then to seek a messenger or a set of messengers that the people can believe in. And currently we don't have nothing selling because we don't have a message. The, 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 a political party's interest is to market an opinion of the world, of the person, and of the country. And the PMP has not established at this time what our opinion is. Mm. Now, um, the, just to touch back a little bit between the um, philosophy or the political philosophy of socialism versus capitalism, because I don't hear another term being thrown out right. um, to say what. Do you consider yourself a democratic socialist or you consider- I'm 100% a socialist. Mm -hmm. I got the opportunity from Peter Phillips to write the last manifesto. And dare I say, it was the most socialist manifesto that we have written in a very long time. Mm -hmm. That manifesto had the first person in the family would go to university for free. That manifesto had a, you could, you could will NHT benefits to your children. You could rent a home and eventually purchase that home so that if you have informal income, you could actually own that home. I mean, my utterances have been constant and consistent for workers, for rules to protect workers so that it is not left to the whims and fancy of the market and of the entrepreneur. For equity and the constant pursuit of equity um, in education, in healthcare, um, that manifesto said 2% of the budget should always go towards infrastructure improvement in education, one year, healthcare the next year, um, and, and, and security the next year, and rotate. So what that manifesto has captured is my opinion of the world, my opinion of the country, and my opinion of people. And I think those are in line with socialist agenda. And I, I must take this opportunity to say something about Imani Duncan. Um, Imani Duncan, she wasn't a member of the manifesto committee, but I will never forget that she dedicated herself in the middle of the campaign for two days, two full days, almost 19 hours to grammar check and to properly write the manifesto in, in the, English, which is not a strong point of mine. The written English is not a strong point of mine. And um, unfortunately, she lost. And I can imagine that she must have ruled that sacrifice. And some of the people I hear saying, Imani wrote this and Imani this, would not have known that on behalf of the party, she sat down um, at in New Kingston for two whole days not going to her constituency, not walking to ensure that the manifesto was ready without being critiqued for small grammatical errors. And um, I must thank her for that because I've never done so publicly. And I was impressed with that effort. The, the thing is, um, the way it is right now, 
where people, so whatever it is that caused them to get sidetracked, things have gotten way much worse now. Um, are you picking up anything to say that people are not maybe ready, more ready for your style of politics, for so democratic socialism, anything that, or do they just still thinking about their bellies? What, how do you, what, what are you thinking? Remember, you know, we are not all one type of people. I've always had support for my opinions, um, in spite of the cliff use of the world that tried to diminish my character in society. But I, I've always had support for my opinions from some people. And there's some people that I cannot say nothing bad about me too. And I'm sure Lisa has that. I'm sure Peter has that. Bunting, I'm sure Mark has that. They're a set of people. But a messenger don't start out with 100% agreement. You start out and go to, 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 to be fishers of men, to be disciples to the people around your message. That is why um, DJ Patterson did have live and direct. Um, Michael did have one as well that he went to the people. And the people must be willing to listen even if they disagree. I think that is the greatest talent that I have been blessed with that people are willing to listen, even in disagreement. And um, those are my talents. Now there are other people who have their own talents and people are going to measure everybody's talents and everybody's weakness. Um, my own disappointment is the, 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 the quick disregard for my, my interests based on my resources, because politics should not be reserved only for those who can afford personal investment. It has no gone to that. But um, I just want to see a better country and I know that can only come through a politically organized system. And so I want to see a better party so that I can see a better country. And, and, and I'm getting worried that that is, is moving further away from me. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find a and um, oh, somebody was asking about what foundation. I, I understand, but if you could just elaborate on that a minute. When you say that the foundation that was, I think the 10 million foundation, that might be what you're asking about. Yeah, the, 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 what, 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 I don't even know the name, so, so disinterested I am in it. Oh, the one uh -huh. about fear, I think the Fear Club. Fear, fear Club, Club Foundation, right. Yeah. Um, that, that, that they started. And I made the point from the first time it was announced. A political party is to organize people so as to change the policies of the country so that the vast majority benefit from new policies, not to individually and independently help one, one, and two, two people um, within the political party. There should be such anxiety, such, such fervor for change that we are moving towards a policy that allows for the NHT to consider persons um, with lower levels of income, not for some raffle um, strategy to choose one person out of 35 or 48,000. So I, I have never been in, 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 and I've never practiced that. I've never practiced that. Um, even this thing with food basket, I, I find it to be quite disrespectful to get this bag of food, take a photo of the person, put it up on the internet, yeah. um, embarrassing the person yeah. by proving that they're incapable to even afford food. Um, I find it to be disrespectful. Going to somebody who has a sick yard and for your own intent, take a picture of the person in their lowest moment, put it on the internet so that people know that you went to the yard. There's no benefit to the person. Yeah. So those are just my opinions. It don't mean I'm right, but those are my opinions. Right. I'm trying to run through some of these um, questions. I think you have answered most of them, what I'm seeing, but I'm just going to say to people who are listening, if you do have a question, um, please, we might have a few more minutes that I could spare. Um, and uh, it took me a while to get to it, but it's, it's, the, the, the responses are quite numerous. I'm trying to scroll through the past to see if there's any, anything that I could grab the mostly are agreeing with you. I can tell you that you, you, your, your presence here is doing your world of good right now. I, um, <laughs> until tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I tell you, I, I have my ears to the ground and I was trying to say this to Paul Burke 
when I spoke with him, you know, pay some attention to the, even though sometimes, you know, things can go off, off kelter with, with, um, with um, Twitter and those, I, I'm not really a Twitter person, but um, it could go off skelter uh, and um, it, 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 um, I'm trying to find one of them, but I think you're so thorough when you speak that you have answered, uh, let's see, Russia, let me see if you say, plus your forces. Uh, um, I think the question, one of the questions I came up is, and I think you answered it by saying, they were asking, why did you resign? But I think you had kind of gone through it to say, you tried to speak to these people and you tried to make a compromise. You even gave up your, your seat. But is there anything else you want to add to that while I try to see if I find any? Well, it came to, at the point that they decided to resign, I had long given up my interest in returning. So I was going to stay until the September when the new people would come in. They were under the impression that they were having a, a negotiation of a two plus two, two remaining, that would be Wickham and, uh, and Mikhail. And two new because the leader consistently were saying he wanted people who he could trust and people that supported him. He said it on the radio many, many times. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't involve myself in the de negotiations because I already offered up my spot. So there can be no basis for my involvement in the negotiation. What I'm gonna say, if it's Angela Bromberg, I'm, I'm running, I don't want she, no. I offered my position up for you to fill it with who you were comfortable with. And so when I heard that um, that negotiation was being bamboozled um, and that five people nominate before we come and all of that, um, I was in agreement with the others that some step, drastic step has to be made to, 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 to show our disgust. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just went along with the other three to show my disgust as well. But um, it was trying to be sold that we wanted power. Um, I don't understand how in particular, I would want for when I long said I'm not going back. So, so and, yeah. and when I gained power, it was through an election. It was through facing the delegates, for which I'm not afraid to face the delegates. But if I'm going to West Milan and I see the bus leave Kingston and reach and not be, that look like for the bus and see, that I can feel safe in making a phone call, that I can feel safe in having a conversation, and that I can feel safe in a discussion inside the officer's WhatsApp group that will not be leaked to a blogger and then the blogger be um, verbatim quoting what was said in an officer's group and that was not being provided. Yeah. Um, yeah somebody, uh, well, I saw a princess, she said, to, she's a princess, I call her my warrior queen, one of my warrior mm -hmm. queens, Princess Hall. She's asking you to concentrate on PNP and 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 less on the third party. Um, the, and the third party, the, the rum, the rum party. I think that's the UIC. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that one. Not that one. They don't have anything. They're talking about oh, the, rum, one? Oh, the, oh, the rum. Oh, okay. the rum party. All right, all right. The internal third party. Yeah, the rum party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you yeah. see. Remember, you know, if you look at mathematics, it is it's a regression, a regression line, what you call a line of best fit. Very, very few opinions are on the line. Most opinions are somewhere close to the line and closer to this line than the other line. And so there will always be disagreements inside a party. Some will be more right than others. Some will be more left than others. And, and that happened throughout history. Some will feel that this is the priority housing. Some will feel education is a priority. Some will feel health is a priority. So. Hold on. It kind of broke a second. Go back to where I say health is a priority. When it comes you, back. You, you, yeah, you said health is, some feel health is a priority. Pick it up from there. It's still a bit, the, the phone line is giving you a, a, a challenge. Give it a second and let's see if it will settle down. That is all about the phone line. We know that. So it, it might take a bad it's, it's struggling, but give it a second. Don't say anything else for like a quick second. Let it clear. And then try again. Is that, is that, is. Yeah, I think. It, yeah, yeah, I think it just cleared up now. Try it again. 
All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. It's still, yeah, try again. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, try. Try to go back with that line. Yeah, right. so, 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 the try. Oops, yeah, we lost him. Okay, we're going to try to see if our right, Damien, if you're hearing me still, please try. We, you know, I'd love to, um, I don't want to just hang up on, it's your, it's your um, show, it's, the whole um, focus is on you. So I want to give you a chance to come back so we can say goodbye to the people because the, the response has been great. And um, I can tell you, you did yourself a world of good and by coming on this program this evening. And I think you have been answering the people's questions um, and they, they, they're pretty much cheering you on. And, um, and see one person is saying here, uh, Paula Chambers is saying that giving out a food package is very disrespectful. Damon, if you're hearing me, please try and come back. I'm gonna to try to hang as long as possible to try to get you back to close off. And I will never put my finger in the ink for those capitalists. Um, Stanford, Stewart said he will never put his finger in the ink for, the, for, for those capitalists. Um, let me see if I can send him a message quickly to come back. I'm going to try to just hang me. The, I, uh, if, I'm going to try and find some music or something. Please try again. All right. Hold on. If not, I, I, I play. Let's see if I can find a quick song to put music here. To, I'll, I'll repeat this one. Let me see who is this called. Jerk in here. Da, 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 da. Um, ah, I think he's back. Okay. Okay. Uh, it should be coming up in a minute. All right, he's coming back. Good. All right, you're back. I didn't want to just mm -hmm. end the program without you because I'm telling you, you're getting a lot of good support here. If, if this was some kind of election, you'd be a, you, it would be a landslide this evening with you because you have really touched on a lot of the critical points that people, you know, the things people are interested in. And you're saying things that people, you know, one of the things one lady said, uh, I moved off of it, so I, I don't have her name right here, but she said that that thing you made, the point you made about the food package, that she finds it very disrespectful. And you, you had said that. And, um, and you know, uh, wow, I, yeah, um, I, have some people I really want to give you a chance to, to close off. I, you know, this telephone company thing, you know, this is where I tell you, I'm, I'm going to have a talk, have a talk with um, Philip Paulwell very soon because, you know, he must be hurting to know that what he had put together is pretty much destroyed by these people. And, um, and I, you know, I'm hoping maybe the next time it's going to be Philip Paul to come help us understand some of these, you know, things that have been happening with the telephone system. Um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of just killing a little time and hope, hopefully Damien will, will get a chance to come back. Yeah, I'm trying to get some music to see if we can. Yeah. Ah, here's a, I like this one. So now, all right, he's back. All right, uh, so Damien, hopefully the reception is much better. All right, Damien, let, let me see if we can wrap up because they, they, I don't know if it's again. again. Yeah, so um, what I like, you know, if there's anything you want to, you know, people are 
hope, and I'm thinking they're gonna, they must be happy this evening that they have heard from you. <laughs> Is there anything you wanna say so we can um, um, Let me just give you a little bit of this. Kind of, Traveling up the mountain one day, and suddenly I heard a voice come to I and say, yeah, yeah. Behold, I come quickly to pay every man according as their work shall be. So, um, just kind of let's put that bit of meditation inside here because mm-hmm. I know you must have gone through many a days and if you hear those voices talking to you every day and um, to, to, to let you know that it's all right, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and you, you are a very special person to Jamaica. You remind me a lot about Michael Mindley, a young Michael Mindley. Because Thank people, you. People see the old Michael Manley, the picture, and you see some young pictures, but you never, they didn't know the young man, how young he was when he went to lay down in the middle of halfway tree, when he made his, made his presence known, when he was taking over the party. And, mm-hmm. he, you know, I know um, it's not, I don't believe there's anything, freedom is not given, freedom is taken. And sometimes, as you said, about the the, 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 the the warrior or the fighter whose blood is spilled for the ones who are edging them along. Mm-hmm. And, and to say that their blood is not gonna be spilled. But a lot of times the, 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 the unknown soldier dies. You know, he's, yeah. he's the one who dies a lot too. So sometimes the general gets thing, but to me, the man who is willing to give it up, that's the man who becomes a martyr. The, the, the Nelson Mandela's, the Martin Luther King's, the Malcolm X, the, the, even our own Marcus Garvey. You know, he paid a heavy price fighting for us. So I'm just saying, don't be afraid to fight and don't be afraid because you, you have support. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna ask you to do one thing. People are gonna go to, um, the party headquarters on Thursday, the 23rd, I think. And I'm suggesting you, you at least even go there and give some no. moral support. <laughs> no. no, I won't. I won't be there. Next year, you should be organized. But no, um, I've been fighting. I've been fighting for the longest time. And I don't even know how Jamaica people choose who they rate and who they ridicule because I, I think I'm one of the very few. I've, I've, Every talent that I have, I've given it to the service of this country. I used to do three, four graduations a day now to go and speak to young people. Even now with the free maths classes on, on, on the internet. I've been doing that um, since 22, 23. But I mean, people just always, they take some joy in offering ridicule to people who are trying to help them and offering ratings to people who are trying to ridicule them. Mm. And um, so I'm always grateful to those who lend support, who correct the lies, who, who block um, on my behalf. Sometimes and I see, sometimes I see things that people say about me. It is so ridiculous <laughs> um, um, that, that I don't even know how to answer. And I see people go out there and answer. Like, for example, I hear this new thing inside the party and inside the country that I'm a loser. Oh, wow. I've lost two elections in my life, one internal 
um, and one external. Mm -hmm. Owen Gill, president at Bahamas, landslide. Gill, president at UA, landslide. Taylor Hall, all chairman, landslide. Gill, pre president of PMPYO, landslide. East Rural St. Andrew, um, coming from seven points behind. Um, vice president of the People's National Party. I, I, I've won so many elections. Mm -hmm. I've lost two. Well, I, <laughs> one I, I get... and one that everybody knew that I was the only one with a chance. And every time that I run on behalf of the party, I get more votes than anybody ever get before and more votes than anybody get after. And somehow it has caught on that I'm a loser, I can't understand. But Where? nobody said I'm a loser. I, I, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't hear that. Even if nah. you, I think, you know what, you're a bit, sometimes, I think you, you're, you're, what month were you born, sir? October. Yeah. People who were born in that, what, early October? No, the 26th, that's the 26th of October People is my birthday. People who born in that kind of, uh, that September, October time, you tend to worry a lot about what people have to say about you. So sometimes you miss the bigger picture, the bigger crowd. You hear some little mm -hmm. voices making some little noise. <laughs> And you, you pick up on those. I have a niece and I have a son and I have a, you know, several other people who are like that. They, 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 they just grab onto some, some negative stuff. And I think you go and look at Facebook when you finish where this program you know, took place and see how people are reacting to you. And I've heard it. The only person I can tell you and my warrior queens, they, 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 they're not giving up on her. The only person who I think they will take over you. And when, they, when it comes down, they will say, if it's not Lisa, it's Damien. And if it's Damien get it, then we so, so we, we are gonna have to go through some, this is what I was saying to, I had a talk, a little chat with, um, I think it might've been a text thing with, 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 um, with um, Paul Well, And, wow, it's gone again. Fucking telephone company, man. All right, so until he comes back, we might try to get back a little bit of that music. I think it's gone, that thing I'm ever using. All right, hang in there, people. I'm going to get this. Yeah, what he say to wear it on? Might be a or something now. Right? All right. Um. So this world is like a mirror, reflect in what you do. And if you face it smiling, it will smile right back to you. So do unto others as you would have them do, so that your days will be many, many years much longer. And I know that it was the voice, was the voice of the most high. Yes, I know, yes, I know that it was the voice, the voice of the most All right, so I think we will have to close off on that because um, I don't think Damien is going to come back. There might be a power cut or something. But ladies and gentlemen, we were um, speaking with um, Senator, uh, college lecturer, uh, Damien Crawford, 
who is also a businessman, I forgot to mention that, he runs one of, probably one of the, could by now the largest goat farm, I could be wrong, but he runs a, quite a decent sized goat farm. He runs a chicken uh, and egg business, a liquid egg. I think COVID has thrown a little bit of dent in his business, but he's doing other things. And, and he said that even though he wears his dreadlocks, he's not a Rasta man as such. Um, so he, he will, um, he doesn't eat pork, but uh, these are some of the things I heard him say. He doesn't eat pork, but he also will raise um, pigs. And he's a businessman. And, you know, sometimes it's not what you want, it's what the public wants, you know? So um, with that, we just want to say thanks to Damien. Thank you, Damien, for coming on and making our live really lively. And we look forward to speaking with you again somewhere in the near future. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening.